Hey beauty conscious people, in this video we are going to go head to head and do a split face study to see how the new neurotoxin on the market, Juvo, compares to Botox. Juvo is otherwise known on social media as Nutox. One thing that I want to mention is that I am not sponsored or endorsed by either company, Evelis or Allergan. I'm just doing my due diligence to give you good and valuable unbiased information. Here's a little bit about the company history. The CEO of the company that makes Juvo, David Mutazetti, served as Senior Vice President at Allergan, the company that makes Botox. Botox has the biggest market share in the U.S. for any botulinum toxin. David left Allergan to start Evelis, the company that makes Juvo, and he thought if he can find a neuromodulator as good or better than Botox, then they can tap into the market share, and that's what the company's aiming to do. The company is the first cosmetic-only neurotoxin on the market in the U.S. This just means that they're not planning on getting FDA approved for any medical reasons. For example, Botox is FDA approved to treat a lot of medical conditions, and it was actually used medically for things such as blepharospasm and cervical dystonia before we discovered, oh, it also has a cosmetic benefit. It reduces wrinkles by relaxing muscles. The drug Juvo actually originates in Korea, where it's known there as Nobata. It's been used there for six years before it was brought to the U.S. and renamed Juvo. And it got recent FDA approval to be used in Canada and Europe, where it's going to be marketed as Nuceva. You can see from their branding that they're really trying to tap into the millennial market. They know more and more young folks and millennials are going to be learning about the benefits of neuromodulators. Everyone is very familiar with Botox because Botox was the pioneer and the first neurotoxin to be approved in the US market. So that's why we chose Botox to go head to head with on our split face study. One important thing that I want to point out is people's perceptions versus reality when it comes to neuromodulators are totally different. I've had so many people say to me, I feel like my Botox isn't lasting as long. I feel like my Dysport isn't lasting as long as it used to before. And then I pull up their baseline photo and compare it to the photo that day and their jaw drops and they're shocked. People forget how much movement they used to have. I think what happens is they get so used to seeing themselves smooth that at the slightest bit of movement, they think, oh my God, it's not lasting as long because they just become so used to seeing themselves look so smooth. That's my theory. One injector in Texas, I believe, did her own blind study in which she injected the same patient at two different treatment sessions. And then she asked the patient, okay, so which one do you like better? The patient's response was, oh, I definitely like the first one. It was better. I want that one. And then the injector revealed, hmm, interesting. I injected you with Botox both times. I've also heard some feedback within our cosmetic community regarding what they thought of Juvo, and the word on the grapevine seems to be, I feel like Juvo kicks in faster, but I don't feel like it lasts as long as Botox. And I almost wanna say, I'll take that with a grain of salt until I can see pictures. Again, especially when it comes to neuromodulators, perception versus reality are two different things. That's why we're doing the split face study today, evidence-based medicine. So let's get into what you want to know, which is how does it compare to Botox? Specifically, when does it kick in and how long does it last compared to Botox? So here's our model for the study. And the area that we're doing the split face study on is his crow's feet. One thing that we need to keep in mind with this model is the asymmetry between his right and his left side. Here we can see the muscles on his right side are stronger than the muscles on his left side. But in order for it to be a fair study, we have to do the same amount of units on both sides. With that being said, we're not going to be shocked if his left side looks better than his right side. And because of this asymmetry, we all have asymmetry, by the way, so it's very hard to find a model who is symmetrical on both sides. But the point is, we're not going to blame the neuromodulator if he looks better on the left side than he does the right. So we did 10 units of Botox to his right side and 10 units of Juvo to his left side. So here he is at two days, not much of a difference. And at three days, looks like the Juvo might be starting to kick in. Let's see, at four days, it looks like it's definitely kicking in a little bit faster than the Botox side. And six days 
And at about a week, we say when it that's when it really starts to kick in. And two weeks, here we are at full correction. Now let's talk longevity. Here he is at two months, still looking good. Three months, still looking good. I would say they're about the same. And four months, now it's starting to come back a bit. And here he is at five months out. So five months is when we say that neuromodulators to the crow's feet usually are pretty much almost all back. And you can see from this photo, it looks like the results are pretty similar between both sides. So in my opinion, it seems that Juvo kicked in a little bit sooner than Botox, maybe on day four or five-ish, and it seemed to last around the same time. But now that you have the evidence, you can decide for yourself. I can see how it'd be difficult for people to decide between the two because there doesn't seem like there's a big distinct difference between Juvo and Botox. I can also tell you that I'm working on another split face study between Botox versus Dysport, and I can tell you that there seems to be a distinct difference in onset of action and potency between the two. Potency meaning it seems like one neurotoxin is definitely stronger than the other neurotoxin, but it's still too early to tell, so be sure to subscribe to this channel so that when the study comes out, you'll be alerted. Also, in my opinion, there may be an advantage to sticking with Botox. And that has to do with Allergan's rewards program. In case you didn't know, Allergan, the company that makes Botox and a lot of other things, they have a rewards program. And how it works is basically, it works like frequent flyer miles. The more you do, the more you earn points off for future treatments. And since Allergan owns a lot of other things like Juvederm, Velour, Fulbella, Voluma, Latisse, cool sculpting, there could be an advantage of just sticking it out with them and using the rewards program. However, come January 2020, I heard that Evelis will be coming out with their own rewards program for Juvo. So if you like content like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Again, we're also going to be coming out with another split face study, Botox versus Dysport. And I can tell you in that study, it seems like there's definitely more of a distinct difference. Also catch me on Instagram at natural injector.